Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video in which we go through gradient intercept form. So it turns out, unless the line is perfectly vertical, you can write the equation of any line in the Cartesian plane in the form y equals mx plus b. y equals something times x plus b. Now we've already seen m is what we call the gradient. The number in front of x is the gradient. And this number by itself, b, that's the value you'd get when x is 0. That's the y value when x equals 0. It is the y-intercept. So this form is very helpful in understanding the characteristics of a line and will be very helpful in allowing us to graph some lines. So for example, let's say we had the equation y equals 3x plus 1. Here, the gradient is 3, the y-intercept is 1. Let's say we had y equals 4 over 3 Actually, I'll make it negative 4 over 3x minus 2. Here, the gradient is the number in front of x, and the y-intercept is the number by itself. Now, if I switch around the order of this, it's still the number in front of x that is the gradient. So if I have something like 2 minus 3x here, the gradient is not 2, it's the number in front of x and the y-intercept is the number by itself. So this is very helpful when we come to graph. What you can do to graph when it's in gradient-intercept form is you can start by marking the y-intercept, which is really easy to do. And then what you do is you use m. Remember the gradient is rise over run. You can use that to find a second point. And when you found two points, all you need to do is join them up. So now we're going to look at graphing these lines that we've got here using gradient intercept form. So we set up our axes as normal. Let's first graph y equals 3x plus 1 using these steps here. So we know the y-intercept is 1, so we mark that. Now the gradient is 3. So gradient of 3 is, of course, the same as 3 over 1. So as I said in previous videos, always for the bottom number, that's how far you go right. So what we're going to do is go right 1 because one's on the bottom, and we're going to go up three to there. Now we found a second point, that's step two done. So now we just join up the lines, draw a line through both of them, and of course we need to make sure arrows on our lines and it's labeled, but that means we're actually done. So how easy was that? That's the graph of y equals 3x plus 1. So now let's look at the graph of y equals minus 4 over 3x minus 2. So we found that the y-intercept is minus 2, so we plot that. So the gradient's negative 4 over 3. So I told you the bottom is how far you go to the right. So we're going to go to the right 3. Now, because the gradient is negative, we don't go up, we go down. Remember, negative gradient, the line leans left. So we're actually going to not go up 4, we're going to go down 4 to here. So now we've got a second point. All we do is draw a line through those points. And once again, we put on the arrows and we label our line. So then let's look at this third line here, y equals 2 minus 3x. So this time the y-intercept wasn't negative 2, it's positive 2. Now the gradient is negative 3. In the first one it was positive 3, so we went across 1 and up 3. But because now it's negative 3, we go across 1 and we're going to go down 3 to find our second point. So I need to make a point. Gradient intercept form means it's y equals something. Then and only then is the number in front of x the gradient and the other number the y-intercept. So if you have something like 2x minus 5y equals 10, 
That is not in gradient intercept form. You can't say the gradient's 2 and the y intercept is 10 because it's not y equals something. If we wanted to graph using gradient intercept form, we need to get y by itself. But an equation like this would be much easier to use the xy intercept method that we learned a few lessons ago, okay? So it must be y equals to b in this form. So we're just going to look now at deciding whether or not a point is on a line. Please pause and copy this down if you need. The kind of question you might be asked here, you'd be given a point like 7 minus 9 and asked, does it lie on some lines? So in this case, we're going to decide whether it lies on y equals minus 2x minus 5 and y equals minus 2x plus 5. So remember, the line y equals minus 2x minus 5, the points that lie on that line are the values of x and y that satisfy the equation. So to determine whether or not 7 minus 9 lies on this line, we're just going to substitute x for 7, y for minus 9, and see if we get a true statement. So if I substitute y for minus 9 and x for 7, I get minus 9 equals two minus 2 times 7 minus 5. Now, if you put that on your calculator... That's not a true statement. Minus 9 does not equal minus 2 times 7 minus 5. This part equals minus 19. So because the statement is false, the answer is, does the point lie on the line? No. If we look at the second line, y equals minus 2x plus 5, we do the same thing. Substitute y, substitute x, and see if we get a true statement. Now, minus 2 times 7, which is minus 14, plus 5, does equal minus 9. This is a true statement. So, therefore, yes, the point will lie on the line. So, determine if a point lies on the line. Rather than graphing the line, which will take way too much effort and way too much time, substitute the x and y value into the equation and see whether or not you get a true statement. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.